Hello everyone, welcome back to your YouTube channel AgriAddict. I am your mentor Ariprasad SK, a PhD scholar from Indian Agriculture Research Institute, New Delhi. So it's been very long that I was not able to come on YouTube. So today I have come up with some content with revision series and in this particular video we are going to discuss about a nitrogen fixation. So this nitrogen fixation is very much important for all the ICR PG aspirants in the subject of plant science physical science agronomy and also for the biotechnology students trust me if you watch this complete video you may not you may not need to just again go to the books and revise the nitrogen fixation and there is no need of again reading it from the books okay so i will be starting from the scratch and i will be discussing in detail about the complete nitrogen fixation process and also I will be highlighting the important things that you have to remember for your exams and also the important concepts that can come in the exams. So we will discuss each and everything in detail. So stick with me until the end of the video and take a complete benefit. So from the 11th and 12th knowledge and also from the UG, whenever we hear nitrogen fixation, we are aware of the different nitrogen transformation process like mineralization, we have nitrification, denitrification, volatilization. and biological nitrogen fixation BNF and also there are process of leaching, immobilization etc. I believe like we all have this idea about all of this process. So before directly jumping into the following processes, we will just know what exactly this nitrogen fixation is and why do the plants require this nitrogen. If they require, how it is being assimilated by the plants or before that we will see what is this fixed means like why it should be why the nitrogen should be fixed before it should it is absorbed by the plants and next if it is absorbed by the plants but in what form they are going to absorb it in what in what form or what are the sources different sources of the nitrogen that are available in the nature that we will go through and next how exactly does this plant absorb the nitrogen the complete process we will discuss in detail. And within that, we have this different nitrogen transformation process which we can further discuss in detail. So, whenever there is a nitrogen transformation taking place, majority of the nitrogen transformation is aided by the microorganisms. So, we will discuss in detail about what are the microorganisms that are involved in this nitrogen fixation process. Okay. Within this nitrogen fixation or within the process of nitrogen transformation, there is one particular process which is called as biological nitrogen fixation. So this is particularly very much important. So biological nitrogen fixation, within this biological nitrogen fixation, there are some plants which forms the nodules for the nitrogen fixation. So we will discuss in detail about the nodule forming plants and how does the bacteria or how does the microorganisms interact with the roots of the plants which forms this nodules and how the nitrogen is being fixed and lastly once we come up to this stage the last step would be the process of assimilation assimilation in the sense absorption how does the plants absorb this available form of nitrogen see up to the from the first point till this one it is about fixing of nitrogen fixing of nitrogen after fixing of nitrogen once it is fixed in the available form how the plants is going to absorb it so this we will discuss in the last one so these are the content that we are going to discuss in today's video so to have a clear understanding just be with me until the end of the video and if you have any doubts after watching this video you can always comment on the chat box and also we will be trying our best to answer your questions and if you are looking for a complete mock test bundle for whatever subjects you are going to take in your ICR PG exams, we have the complete mock test bundle series for available for 6 different subjects starting with the horticulture, social science, plant science, 
physical science and entomology and agronomy so this mock test bundle includes the topic wise mock test subject wise mock test general agriculture mock test and also the full length mock test which is available for just 149 rupees for now the coupon code is agri addict you have to just type agri addict while checking out you will be getting flat 50 percent off and you will be getting the course for 149 rupees so just go ahead there are only four to five days of time left you can i hope like you people have prepared well just evaluate yourself and just identify the key areas where you are deficient in and you can improve on that and if you have any doubts while attending the mock test or after attending the mock test you can always uh, put a message in the community or in the whatsapp group we will clarify all your doubts okay. so let us start with the nitrogen fixation so what is this nitrogen fixation nitrogen fixation is nothing but conversion of unavailable form of nitrogen into available form my handwriting might not be that good but that is the reason i am going very slow and i am explaining each and everything at least twice just be attentive and listen to me okay so the nitrogen fixation is nothing but the conversion of the unavailable form of nitrogen into the available form so when the nitrogen is in the available form in the nature only then the plants can absorb this or absorb this nitrogen the plants can only absorb the nitrogen when the nitrogen is present in the available form then what is this available form and unavailable form the plants let us just answer this first question what is this how why why does this plants require nitrogen so why does actually plants require nitrogen if you just absorb starting from dna to protein or the amino acids or the enzymes and for all the cellular activities the nitrogen is the integral compound or the integ integral molecule of all of these products starting from the dna to protein and also for various cellular activities nitrogen plays a very crucial role for this reason nitrogen should be absorbed by the plants and we know that plants are the autotropic they absorb the materials from the nature and they prepare their own material own food in a sense and also which is helpful in the growth and development See, whatever the metabolic requirements that is required by the cell the plants absorb the raw materials from the nature and they prepare their content and that is how the growth and development occurs in the plants or this is how the plants develop and with the plants the heterotrophs will survive so this is a chain chain of events right that is why the plants like we see this nitrogen fixation term only for the plants because plants take up all the raw materials from the nature like for example it takes up the energy in the form of uh, radiations and it also takes up the carbon dioxide and from the soil it takes up the nitrogen this is about the plants taking up the nitrogen the next question would be like this is the first question the next question would be in which form in which form the plants take up the nitrogen In which form do you think the plants will take the nitrogen so for this for this question to answer we at least have to know what are the different available forms of nitrogen in nature different available forms or simply different forms of nitrogen in the nature so what are the different forms of nature different forms of nitrogen that are available in the nature so they can be broadly classified into uh, organic form and the inorganic form i hope like you know the difference between this organic form and the inorganic form organic forms what are the examples what example can be it it is amino acids nucleic acids are the best example for the inorganic form i will take two important molecules here two important compounds here one is the nh4 ion or the ammonia other one is nitrate there are also few others or many others form of the nitrogen which are there in the inorganic form but let us now consider these two different forms this is important i will tell you why so out of this 
two different broadly classified forms of the nitrogen availability the plants the plants how do the plants in which form these plants absorb this nit in which form does this plants absorb the nitrogen they absorb the nitrogen in the inorganic form so this is what important is so it is important to know that the plants absorb the nitrogen in which form it is in the inorganic so out of various inorganic form that are available in nature the plants absorb most of the nitrogen in the form of nitrate few percent or the rest of the form rest of the nitrogen will be absorbed in the form of ammonia or the ammonium ion okay so this is what you have to remember just understand this complete scenario this single slide will explain almost all of the complete nitrogen fixation process first of all what are the different forms of nitrogen that are available other than these inorganic forms so the nitrogen is also available as a molecular nitrogen in the atmosphere molecular is in the atmosphere only in the atmosphere but majority or the we know that among the different atmospheric gases nitrogen is of 78% right most of the nitrogen molecular nitrogen is present in the atmosphere when we talk about soil within soil so the nitrogen is present in the form of ammonium ion or the ammonia or the nit nitrate and also the this is all about the inorganic form of nitrogen what about the organic form i told you the organic form of nitrogen in the organic matter yeah, the dead and decayed organisms nitrogen is present which is of organic in nature so these are the different sources of nitrogen from which the plants can absorb yes plants can absorb only in the form of inorganic form or inorganic form but these are the available sources of nitrogen in the nature i told you the plant nitrogen fixation should occur before the plants take up this nitrogen right fixation in the terms of unavailable form to available form so i told you about two different forms right organic form and inorganic form so out of these two different forms which will will be unavailable unavailable is when it is in the organic form it is unavailable whenever it is in the inorganic form and specifically in these two different forms then it is available form right so the first step would be conversion of unavailable form of nitrogen into the available form so how does this occur the conversion of the molecular nitrogen into the ammonia so what do we call this process as what do we call this process as so this is called as biological nitrogen fixation so this is a one type so this is a one type of process of conversion of molecular nitrogen into the ammonia there are also other type of process mainly there are three the second one is by the industrial process i hope like you are very much familiar with the one of the industrial process of conversion of molecular nitrogen into the ammonia which is it it's aber process aber process right so what is the need of this aber process why the industrially or artificially the nitrogen is being converted it is because it is useful in the creation of what it is useful in the creation of fertilizers this is second form of how the molecular nitrogen is converted into ammonia and there is also another form which is through the lightning natural process which is through the lightning or the photochemical reactions because of this the molecular form is converted into a nitrate or sorry ammonium form so this is conversion of molecular nitrogen to the ammonium form one is biological nitrogen fixation why it is the why the term biological nitrogen fixation it is because of the fact that nitrogen fixation is occurring in the nature it's a natural process but with the aid of microorganisms so one important thing to note here is all the organisms which undergo or which carry out this biological nitrogen fixations are strictly prokaryotes only the few prokaryotic organisms are capable of fixing this nitrogen and what do we call such type of prokaryotes as it is called as diazotropes the pro 
prokaryotes which can fix this atmospheric nitrogen they are called as diazotrophs only the prokaryotes have the capability to fix this atmospheric nitrogen and during this process its conversion of the molecular nitrogen to the ammonia right so what do we call this process so this is a reduction process reduction process if a certain process is reduction it requires electron donor so we will discuss each and everything regarding this process in detail in the lecture, upcoming slides just at least for now know this so this is a one kind of transformations that has already been covered next this ammonia since it causes some or causes some toxic effect on the plants it will be readily converted into nitrate form so what do we call this process as the conversion of ammonia or ammonium into the nitrate with the intermediate compound of nitrite this process is called as nitrification and this nitrification is a oxidation process so this is what you have to remember so you have to remember that nitrification is a oxidation process and the biological nitrogen fixation is a reduction process and the biological nitrogen fixation is the conversion of molecular nitrogen into the ammonia and the nitrification is a process of conversion of this ammonia to the nitrate so this is the conversion process of the inorganic form of nitrogen but how this organic form is converted into the inorganic form it is by the process of ammonification so what is ammonification ammonification is nothing but the conversion of the organic material or the organic form of nitrogen into the ammonia that is by the name ammonification and we can also call this process as mineralization why mineralization minerals are what they are the inorganic forms right so the conversion of the organic form to inorganic forms it is called as mineralization so in the exams they might not directly ask you the conversion of the organic form of nitrogen into ammonia they might also ask you the con say that the con what do, what do we call the conversion of the organic form of nitrogen into the inorganic form of nitrogen that means it can be either it's strictly a mineralization but if the options if the other options are not valid you can also go for ammonification since it is the same process where the organic form is just converted into the inorganic form so this is about the ammonification and this ammonification it is by again bacteria and fungi not only the prokaryotes the ammonification process is aided by both the bacteria and also the fungi so this difference you have to remember okay now the nitrate has been formed and it is available for the plants but there is a problem here so this nitrate which is formed it can convert itself into the molecular nitrogen again so what do we call this process as it is called as denitrification so denitrification again by certain bacteria so this will be converted that is the nitrate form the available form of nitrogen the conversion of available form of nitrogen into the unavailable form what do we call that process as it is called as denitrification okay again this is a reduction process I have to remember all of these points other than these points i told you about the volatilization so what is volatilization it is nothing but the gaseous exchange sorry gaseous escape of this ammonia into the atmosphere so this process is called as volatilization apart from volatilization there is also a concept of immobilization immobilization means the conversion of this ammonium form or the nitrate form or the absorption of these two forms by the microbial or the microorganisms so this is called as immobilization and we have also uh, one more term we also have one more term that is called as leaching so what is this leaching leaching is nothing but just erase few of these points leaching is nothing but it is just a physical flow of this nitrate which is present in the ground water which will eventually release to the oceans that means it will be available for the plants to be uptaken so this is about leaching the nitrate leaching so these are the different nitrogen transformation process that occur in the nature by either by the natural process all of all of these are from natural process apart from the industrial process apart from this industrial process all of the other nitrogen nitrogen transformations that i have discussed it is all of natural okay i hope like many most of the things about the nitrogen fixation are clear from this slide anyhow like we will take up each and every method or each and every process and discuss in bit detail about them 
So before that, whatever I have explained, most of the things that are present here, I have already explained it. Just we'll go through it once. So what is industrial fixation? Industrial fixation is nothing but the conversion of the molecular nitrogen into the ammonia. What is atmospheric fixation? Atmospheric fixation. I told you about the lightning and the photochemical conversion of the molecular nitrogen into the nitrate. This is the atmospheric fixation. Then what about biological nitrogen fixation? It is the prokaryotic. I told you this is important. It is by only the prokaryotic organisms. The prokaryotic conversion of the molecular nitrogen into the ammonia. So this is biological nitrogen fixation. Next, the plant acquisition. That is the plant's absorption and the assimilations of. I told you there are two forms by which the plants can absorb, either in the nitrate form or in the ammonium form. Next, it's about immobilization, the microbial absorption and assimilation of the nitrate. The microbes also absorb and assimilate it, assimilate the nitrate form and the ammonium form. That is termed as immobilization. Next, we have the ammonification. So, what is this ammonification? I told you during the ammonification reaction, the bacterial and the fungal, both the components or the both the organisms are involved where the soil organic matter is converted into ammonium or the ammonia. Next, we have some special process or the unique process called as animox. This animox we will discuss in the upcoming slides. Next, it is about nitrification. The nitrification is again the bacterial conversion or the oxidation process which converts the ammonium or the ammonia into the nitrite form with the intermediate compound which is nitrite and which is aided by the different classes of bacteria that we are going to discuss in the upcoming slides. Next, we have this mineralization that is the bacterial and the fungal catabolism of the organic matter into the mineral nitrogen through the ammonification or nitrification. This is one and the same. And next, we have the volatilization. Volatilization, I told you, this is a physical loss of gaseous ammonia to the atmosphere. Next, the ammonium fixation. It is the physical embedding of the ammonium into the soil particles. It is just giving the soils the ammonium. It is ammonium fixation. And then we have denitrification. It is again the bacterial conversion or the reduction process which includes the conversion of the nitrite to nitrous oxide and finally into the molecular nitrogen. It is again the unavailable form for the plants where the plants cannot absorb the nitrogen. Lastly, we have this nitrate leaching. So, what is this nitrate leaching? It is a physical flow of nitrate from the dissolved water, dissolved in the groundwater. Of the, out of the top soil, which will eventually release into the oceans. Okay, so these are the major transformations of the nitrogens that occurs in the cycle or in the occurs in the nature. Just have a clear look at it and also know about the individual terms and the process. This can be asked in the exams, so it's very important. Next. Before I go into the microorganisms, so let us just discuss. Let us just take one biological nitrogen fixation and try to understand what are the different categories of the microbes which are involved in case of nitrogen fixation. Let us take this biological nitrogen fixation and understand this. So, the biological nitrogen fixation I told you it is only through the prokaryotic organisms which is also called as diazotropes. And these prokaryotic organisms have or synthesize a pro enzyme called as nitrogenase, nitrogenase complex. This nitrogenase complex is directly involved in the nitrogen fixation. But this nitrogen, nitrogenase complex, it is sensitive to the nitrogen. That means it can work only in the absence of nitrogen. Right. So this is about the character, this is the characteristic of this particular nitrogenase enzyme. So, whenever we discuss the prokaryotes, there are several categories of the bacteria which can fix the atmospheric nitrogen. Since I told you that the nitrogenase enzyme is oxygen sensitive, that does not mean that aerobic bacteria will not fix the nitrogen. It is not like only the anaerobic bacteria will fix the nitrogen. Yes, the aerobic bacteria will also fix it. Let us see how. So, based on the nitrogen fixation, there are there can be mainly two different categories among the prokaryotic or the bacteria. So, they are based on the living nature. That means whether they are free living or they form a symbiosis with the host. So, 
the first category would be like it can be categorized into two broad classes one is free living bacteria or second one is symbiotic bacteria within this free living bacteria there are again two different classes based on with the requirement of oxygen they are called as aerobic and anaerobic so what are the different examples for the aerobic bacteria this is what this is what is important for you all you have to remember all of these examples like azotobacter azospirillum are the two important examples in case of aerobic bacteria when it comes to the anaerobic bacteria it is clostridium and also the rhodospirillum and rhodospirillum is the photosynthetic bacteria and clostridium is non photo synthetic bacteria so this is the category of free living bacteria next the categories of categories under the symbiotic bacteria this can be again classified into two different types based on whether there will be a formation of nodules or not nodule formation and without nodule formations again the nodule formations they can be classified into two different categories mainly one is legumes because most of all of almost all of the legumes fix the nitrogen by the formation of legumes so they are categorized as legumes and non legumes so within legumes except rajma which do not fix the atmospheric nitrogen all of the other agricultural crops they fix the nitrogen almost all of the legumes whether you it's agriculture or non agriculture almost all of the legumes fix the atmospheric nitrogen one important exception is the rajma specialis vulgaris right again the like in in the legumes most of the nitrogen is being fixed with the formation of nodules in the root but we again have this stem nodulating system so this is in case of sesbania stem nodulating plant and the others all others under the legumes are root nodulating and what and which is the bacterial genus which is mainly involved in the nitrogen fixation here it is rhizobia rhizobia okay have to remember this genus and within this rhizobia there are a specific species of rhizobia which fix the nitrogen in a specific crop for every particular crop there is a specific species of the rhizobia which fixes the atmospheric nitrogen this is again important for your exam you have to remember the individual species with its host okay next without nodules or before that let us consider this non legumes so which are the non legumes in which the nodules are formed they are casuarina america and alnus so these are the host plants and which class of bacteria fixes the nitrogen it is by actinomyces of genus frankia remember this this is about the nodulations nodulating form of symbiotic bacteria which forms the nodules for the nitrogen fixation then what about the examples for the non or non nodulating or the organisms which are not forming the nodules which are in the category of symbiosis it is anabina azolae yeah. anabina azolae so this is a cyanobacteria which forms a symbiotic association with the water fern which is azolla okay i hope this complete process or this complete categorization of the microorganisms or the bacteria which fix the nitrogen is clear to all of you now let us check or see the microorganisms like nostac and anabina as i told you they are free living aerobic and photolithotrophic right this is how they fix the nitrogen so lifestyle this, this might be important at some case Just try to remember this okay next we have pseudomonas azotobacter diabacillus methanococcus Chromantium, Chlorobium, Desulfovibrio, and Clostridium, Rhizobium, and Frankia. Rhizobium and Frankia. Okay, these are the genus which fix the nitrogen, and it includes both bacteria and the archaeal genus. Okay. Next, so I told you the legumes. 
in the legumes the rhizobium genus the specific species fix the atmospheric nitrogen in the specific host right so in case of legumes if you consider legumes parasponia it is azorhizobium bradyrhizobium mesorhizobium and rhizobium cynorhizobium all of these fix the atmospheric nitrogen in this particular host next we have the other one uh, i think i missed to tell you this one um, the non legumes which fix the atmospheric nitrogen with a symbiotic association here the casuarina myrica and ulnus these are also called as actino rhizal plants since it is with the association with the actinomycetes it, the name is actino rhizal plants remember it and earlier it was diazotropes within that the specific category within the non legumes which is fixed by which is a symbiotic association with the non legumes with the actinomycetes the name is actino rhizal plants and we have several different host plants with their specific nitrogen fixing symbionts you have to be very thorough with all of these exams any of these examples can be asked in the exams so make sure to read it revise it and mug up okay mug up these things so we have discussed about the microorganisms which are involved in the biological like which are involved in the biological nitrogen fixation so before we go into the biological nitrogen fixation let us just discuss the other type of nitrogen fixation and at last we will take up this biological nitrogen fixation so can we start with the nitrification process so what is nitrification nitrification is the oxidation of ammonium ion into nitrate so the process of conversion of nh4 plus to the nitrate this is called as nitrification so this conversion it is again a two step process right in the first step the ammonium is first converted into nitrate or nitrite and in the second step the nitrite is converted into nitrate in the first step what are the different bacterial genus which are involved in this conversion so the different bacterial genus which are involved are nitrosomonas nitrosococcus and nitrosospheria these are the three important genus of the bacteria which are involved in nitrogen or the conversion or the nitrogen fixation sorry nitrification process that is conversion of the ammonium form into the nitrite form the second step there are again different genus of bacteria which are nitromonas sorry nitrococcus nitrobacter and nitrosphere so you we have to carefully look into this egg examples that it is nitrosomonas nitrosococcus and nitrosospheria but in the second step it is just nitrococcus and nitrosphere these two are different they are not same have this clear understanding about the different classes of this bacteria okay the first step the conversion which is from ammonium into the nitrate it is a different class of bacteria and for the conversion of this nitrite into the nitrate it is different both are not same okay so this is the process of nitrification next let us discuss about the ammonification ammonification is very simple to understand it is nothing but the conversion of the organic matter into the ammonium or the ammonia this is this complete process is called as ammonification and this and this process is created by both bacteria and the fungus you have to remember this both bacteria and fungus okay. so next it's there is another process which we have discussed it is about denitrification so what is this denitrification denitrification is again the reverse conversion or the conversion of nitrate into the molecular nitrogen this is again a reduction process so what happens here is there are certain bacteria which will use up the nitrate as a electron acceptor 
instead of oxygen so this will take up this nitrate as an electron acceptor and they it will convert this nitrate to nitrite and this NO and N2O and finally to the molecular nitrogen and this is by the certain class of bacteria which are which can, which can be categorized into two different types one can be heterotrophic and other one can be the autotrophic bacteria so the heterotrophic denitrifying bacteria what are the examples it is paracoccus denitrificans and the autotroph and also the various genus of pseudomonas also example and for the autotrophic denitrifying bacteria so the example is thiobacillus denitrificans so these are the two important categories and the examples for the denitrifying denitrifying bacteria i hope this is clear to all of you next i told you one of about the one special process which is anamox so what does what is this anamox means So anamox full form is anaerobic ammonium oxidation. See, it simply means that it clubs the two different process in a single process. That's it. This single process clubs two different processes and give a final product. So what I mean to say is, for example, this is the molecular nitrogen and which is converted into the ammonium ion and this ammonium ion is again converted into the nitrate and this nitrate will be converted into the molecular nitrogen by the process of denitrification and what is the intermediate compound here it is nitrite right so nitrite and lastly it is into the molecular nitrogen so this during this anaerobic ammonium oxidations there are certain class or the genus of bacteria within the there are there are certain bacteria under a phylum which is plantomycetota plantomycetota so under this phylum there are certain bacteria this will utilize the no2 minus as a electron acceptor and this ammonium will be utilizing the NO2 minus as a electron acceptor and it will directly form the molecular nitrogen. That means this complete process is skipped without getting converted into nitrate, it is directly converted, it, this is directly being converted into the molecular nitrogen. So this is called as anaerobic ammonium oxidation. So this process includes the features of both the different process what are the different process which is which to which it is similar to it is similar to denitrifications half of the process is same and also the nitrification so it is similar to both nitrification and the denitrification where in the nitrification what is similar the oxidation of ammonia even in this process the third process the ammonium oxidation is occurring and in the nitrification also we saw that it is an oxidation process that means in the first step the ammonium oxidation occurs and then the nitrate is formed so that is why it is said that this includes the features of both denitrification and also the nitrification this is anaerobic ammonium oxidation anamox and this is seen in the bacteria on a phylum lactomycetota okay since this is something new and this is not usually asked in the exams you can expect this type of questions in the upcoming years okay so make sure to just remember this point so this is all about the different transformation process except biological nitrogen fixation we have discussed all of the other process right in detail now let us start our discussion with the biological nitrogen fixation The biological nitrogen fixation will generate 1 mole of OH2 plus 2 moles of NH3. The complete reaction involves N2 in the presence of 
this n2 requires the 8 electrons plus 8 protons plus 16 ATP. Just remember this three different points. 6, 8, 8 electrons, 8 protons and 16 ATPs and the process is reduction process. Whenever I say the product, the process is reduction, it means it requires, the process requires the electron donor. Some compound should come and act as an electron donor or it should donate its electrons. That we'll discuss who will act as an electron donor here. And in the end, once the reaction is done, the products are, it is 2NH3 plus H2. So this is released. And this is aided by a enzyme complex which is nitrogenase enzyme nitrogenase enzyme complex which are present in only the prokaryotic organism okay and the electron donor which i was talking about here the electron donor is pyridoxin pyridoxin acts as a electron donor for this conversion next let us discuss about this nitrogenous enzyme in bit detail. The one important point that I told you about the nitrogenous enzyme is about the oxygen scavenger, right? So let us just discuss the other few other points. This nitrogen enzymes, based on the presence of the cofactor, there are three different forms. That is, it, it nitrogenous enzymes with the vanadium as a cofactor, molybdenum as a cofactor, or iron as a cofactor out of these three different forms the molybdenum as a cofactor nitrogenous and complex in which the molybdenum is acting as a cofactor is extensively studied one okay next the structure of this nitrogenous enzyme so this nitrogenous enzymes or the composition so it has two different proteins two proteins so what are the two different proteins? It is dinitrogenase synthetase, sorry, dinitrogenase reductase, and second one is dinitrogenase. These are the two important proteins of this nitrogenase complex. Dinitrogenase reductase and second one is dinitrogenase. And this first protein component which is dinitrogenase reductase it is a dimer which contains epi protein so this is a dimer which contains the epi protein and the second one the dinitrogenase enzyme it is a tetramer two identical subunits which has both iron and epi protein and this is a site of nitrogen fixation so this is what is important the dinitrogenase protein which is a tetramer which in which has this molybdenum and iron this and all, which is also called as mo epi protein and the other one is called as epi protein this second one the mo epi protein this is a site for the nitrogen fixation Next, the genes which are involved in the fixation of this nitrogen by this bacteria, the genes are classified as NIF genes. The genes which help in the, which are responsible for the fixation of the nitrogen in the bacteria, the genes are the NIF genes. And this, along with this NIF genes, there are certain accessory genes which are called as fixed genes. And these fixed genes are very much important for the regulation of the aerobic bacteria the regulation of nitrogen fixation in the aerobic bacteria okay Aero, aerobic bacteria so this is about the nif genes and the fixed genes and which which one is acting as an electron donor it is the reduced paradox it is also called as the reduced paradox it acts as a electron donor for this complete reduction process so till now we have discussed about the nitrogenase enzymes, its structure, the protein components and all. Next we will just take up this nitrogenase enzymes which is sensitive to oxygen again. Let us take this point and discuss this in bit detail. 
later detail. The nitrogenase enzyme, which is a oxygen sensitive, that means it, it gets irreversibly inactivated in the presence of the oxygen. In that case, if the nitrogenase enzyme is oxygen sensitive, then what about the aerobic bacteria? For example, like if the bacteria is anaerobic, then there is no problem of nitrogen fixation. It can easily fix the nitrogen. And it also, if if there are facultative anaerobes, in that case they can fix the nitrogen fixation only occurs in the anaerobic conditions, right? But what about the aerobic bacteria? In the aerobic bacteria, I told you in, even in the aerobic bacteria, they are capable of fixing this nitrogen. But how they are going to do it? Since the nitrogenase enzyme which is produced by this bacteria, they are oxygen sensitive. One good example for this is cyanobacteria. In, the, in case of cyanobacteria, they make a specialized cells called as heterocyst. This heterocyst is a specialized cells within the cyanobacteria which will lack this photosystem 2. So, what is the importance of this photosystem 2? If you have read this respiration, sorry, if you have read this photosynthesis chapter, you will be knowing that this is the oxid, oxygen producing photosystem. Since it lacks this oxygen producing photosystem, heterocysts are devoid of oxygen. And within this heterocyst, the nitrogen fixation can occur or the nitrogenase enzyme can work and the nitrogen fixation occurs. So, this is a modification, adaptation, okay. And for all other aerobic bacteria, it can only fix in the anaerobic conditions, in not in the aerobic condition. Similarly, like the same way, the rhizobium, which we have talked about the symbiotic association, right. So, which is a class of bacteria. The rhizobium, this is also not completely a anaerobic bacteria. It is micro aerophilic is micro aerophilic bacteria it is not completely a anaerobic bacteria then how this rhizobium is able to fix the atmospheric nitrogen it is because of the production of a pink pigment called as leg hemoglobin so this leg hemoglobin is produced in the roots which is a pink color pigment which we also call it as oxygen scavenger maintain the low level of oxygen in the root cells oxygen scavenger it will maintain the low level of low concentration of oxygens in the root cells where the nitrogen fixation is occurring because of this reason the nitrogen is able to be fixed with the rhizobium species i hope this is clear and what, where is the where is the location of this leg hemoglobin it is in the cytoplasm cytoplasm of a cells. So, this is a very important table which you have to remember at any cost. Like I said to you before, the particular host plant is being like it will form the symbiotic association with the specific bacterial species. In the first case, I will just repeat it, Parasponia, it is in the Brady rhizobium, the soybean which is most commonly known. It is by the different species of the rhizobium that is Brady rhizobium japonicum and Sino rhizobium freddy and alfalfa, spania, bean, clover, pea. So, you can expect this question in at least the match the following type or in the statement wise. Just make sure to remember all of this. Just try to mug up these things. So, now let us take that rhizobium and discuss about the nodule formation. So, let me just again clarify this point or to avoid any confusion. See, whenever we talk of biological nit nitrogen fixation, it is not only by the rhizobium. There are several different categories. I told you there are free living bacteria, there are symbiotic association and within the symbiotic association, some forms the nodules and some do not form the nodules and directly they fix the atmospheric nitrogen and within these nodules, we have this legumes and non legumes and here we see the rhizobium species which forms which fixes the atmospheric nitrogen with the formation of the nodules that is what we are going to discuss in this slide 
but overall biological nitrogen fixation is with the help of the prokaryotic organisms the only only the prokaryotic organisms with the help of the enzyme nitrogenase complex okay and this nitrogenase complex has a two different proteins one is called as dinitrogen reductase dinitrogenase reductase and second one is dinitrogenase the nit dinitrogenase reductase it is a dimer and uh, the di dinitrogenase it is a tetramer tetramer with the demo fe as a cofactor and dimer with the fe as a cofactor also called as fe protein demo fe protein is for the tetramer which is dinitrogenase okay and this is the site for the nitrogen fixation i hope all of these things are very much clear to you all now we are just taking one example of this rhizobium which forms the nodules and we'll understand like how exactly the nodule formation occurs nodule formation where does it occurs it is mainly in the roots right it is in the roots nodule formation is because of the symbiotic association between the rhizobium species and the leguminous plants so this picture clearly explains about how the nodules are formed here you can see these are the rhizobium species which have been accumulated near to the surface of the cells the root cells how the connection occurs this is because of the production of certain chemicals which are called as flavonoids the flavonoids are produced by the plants which are sensed by this rhizobium species because of the production of certain uh, genes called as nod t this protein is being synthesized from this rhizobium this protein interacts with the flavonoids and get activated and each in turn go back to the rhizobium and activates the other genes which are nod a b and c and these are mainly responsible for this nitrogen fixation once all of this occurs in the second step the rhizobium species the number population of this rhizobium species increases and because of the release of the nod factors a b c the curling of the root air takes place here and in the third step there is a infection thread that is formed until the end it reaches the membrane it reaches with the plasma membrane of the root air cell so the the long thread is formed which will fuse us with the plasma membrane of the root air cells and this infection thread goes forward and it will open in a cell which has prepared the vesicles that will you can see the vesicles which are come out of the come out here which are the one which will enclose the incoming bacteria once the rhizobium enters these vesicles there are some certain structures which are already prepared in the root root cells so these root cells have prepared certain vesicles and within these vesicles the bacterial cells will be enclosed and the thread will be formed onto that those cells where exactly the back, uh, this membrane structure is form, formed okay and once this is done the bacteria will be infected to the root cells and this is how the nitrogen fixation takes place inside that bacteria and the structures see once the rhizobium enters the root cells they continuously multiply first once they multiply sufficiently then they form stop multiplication and they form the bacterioids a structure enclosed structure within which the nitrogen fixation occurs and then what about the role of leguminoglobin the leguminoglobin is produced in the cytoplasm if this is a cell within the cell there is a bacterioids structure which is formed by the rhizobium bacteria within which we see the nitrogen fixation outside or in the cytoplasm of this cell the leguminoglobin is formed okay and this acts as a oxygen scavenger and this is how the nodulation occurs and this is how the nitrogen fixation occurs through the rhizobium species up to now the things are very much clear i guess the things are very much clear till nitrogen till nitrate formation that how the nitrate is formed or how the ammonium is formed so we have discussed till now up to this point so after this the next thing is the absorption of this available form of the nitrogen into the plants that means the assimilation the nitrate assimilation or the nitrogen assimilation by the plants how does this occurs how does the plants take up this nitrogen in the form of either nitrate or in the form uh, in the form of either nitrate or in the form of ammonium ions so if this is the plant which i told you the, from the atmosphere the because of biological nitrogen fixation the ammonia is formed 
right and this ammonia is again converted into ammonium and further it is converted by the process of nitrification into the nitrate and this nitrate the 90 percent of the nitrogen is absorbed by the plants in the form of nitrate this is uh, happening here also the ammonium can directly be incorporated into the plants this is also seen this is the one type and this is the second type but the second type is the most abundant form and the, here you can see the organic matter material it is getting converted into ammonium and this process is called ammonification at this site where the ammonium sorry nitrate is getting absorbed by absorbed by the plant roots how this is occurring this is because of the action of a uh, enzyme called as h plus atpas enzyme so this h plus atpas enzyme will utilize the atp and acts as a proton pump so what it will do is it will just kick out the protons h plus protons that are present within the cell to the intracellular spaces intracellular spaces which is also called as apoplast so i'll write it here is visible apoplast so this apoplast the nit like h plus proteins like h plus ions get accumulated because of if this is a cell so in the intracellular space the protons are getting accumulated they are coming out of the cells because of this there is a concentration gradient which is developed that means at the one end there are high concentration of protons and the other end there is a low concentration of proton and this at this case whenever there is a concentration gradient we know that the particles move from their region of higher concentration to the lower concentrations so while doing so this proton will also take up this nitrate with, along with themselves and this is how the nitrate is going to be incorporated within the plants to the plants now this point is clear that nitrogen has been nit nitrate has been absorbed by the plants but again there is a problem here even if the, they have uh, they are absorbing the nitrate 90 percent of the nitrogen is absorbed in the form of nitrate it is not directly incorporated into the amino acids it has to be again converted into the ammonium ion before conversion of this nitrate into the amino acids it has to be first converted into again ammonium ion which is completely the reverse process of what happened outside the plant cell right so this is again a two step process this is the last process which we have to discuss last but one process which we have to discuss that is conversion of the nitrate into the ammonium ion in the plant cells i told you this is again a two step process so what are the two different steps the first is conversion of nitrate into what nitrite you all know it and the second step this nitrate is further converted into ammonia since it is a two step process we can predict that there are certain enzymes which are involved here the first enzyme is nitrate reductase and second enzyme is called as nitrite reductase these are the two different enzymes which are involved in the conversion of nitrate to nitrite first and then the second step nitrite to ammonium ion and also remember this is also a reduction process okay hope this is fine next this nitrate reductase let us know about its structure nitrate reductase the nitrate reductase is uh, having two identical subunits two identical subunits with each is each having three prosthetic groups each of this component subunit is having three prosthetic groups and what are the names it is fad heme group heme group and lastly it has molybdenum containing organic molecule molybdenum containing organic molecule which is also called as terry so these are the three important prosthetic groups which are present in this each subunit so this is for nitrite reductase next it's the nitrate reductase sorry this is about nitrate reductase nitrate reductase and second it's about nitrite reductase in the nitrite reductase this is made up of a single monomeric protein with a single monomeric protein with the two prosthetic groups so they are fp 
spore s4 and serum 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 okay so these are the two different prostatic groups that are present in this nitrite reductase so again if i am talking that uh, if i am saying that this is a reduction process it requires or it searches for the electron donor again which one will act as an electron donor here in the first step the nadph nadph is acting as a electron donor and in the second steps again the pyridoxine the red color compound the pyridoxine is a red color compound which is acting as a electron donor in the process and the first step it occurs in the cytoplasm or the cytosol and the second step remember the second step it occurs in the chloroplast if it is occurring in the stem it is chloroplast and in the proplastids it is in the root cells if it is the root cells it is in the proplastids and if it is in the stem cell or shoots it is the chloroplast okay that's it so that's that's up to the formation of the ammonium ion so up to now i hope like things are clear like we have come till the end of this nitrogen fixation where we have reached this ammonium form now so what is the last process that is remaining that is conversion of this ammonium form into the amino acids that means the ammonium form which is been synthesized in the plant cells now it has to be converted into or incorporated into the amino acids this is by the cycle called as gs bogat cycle this is also again a two step process which is easy to remember but first let us break this down gs bogat cycle and gs means it is glutamine synthetase glutamine synthetase gs then what about this bogat bogat is nothing but glutamate synthase there is also some other name you may not to worry about it just remember it as glutamate synthase and the earlier one gs it is a glutamine synthetase so these are the two different enzymes so and the cycle which is formed by these two different enzymes it is called gs bogat cycle okay so this is i told you this is again a two step process where in the first step the glutamate reacts with the ammonium which is formed here in the plant cells and convert it into glutamate sorry glutamine in the first step and this glutamine is utilized and reacts with the alpha keto glutarate form 2 glutamate 2 glutamate and this first step gs will act and the second step the bogat will act and this process repeats until all of the ammonium ions are utilized and converted into glutamate up that is why it is called as cycle and once the glutamates are formed further so these are the only two amino acids which are formed and next after forming of these two amino acids which are glutamate and glutamine glutamate and glutamine these are converted into the other incorporate they are incorporated into the other amino acids by trans amination reactions so remember this trans amination reaction this reaction they are converted into the other amino acids or incorporated into the other amino acids so this is the complete story of the nitrogen fixation so just to recall the things whatever i have discussed i told you that the different forms of nitrogen that are available in the nature are in the form of n2 that is the molecular nitrogen and in the soil can be in the form of nitrate the form of ammonium ion or the ammonia or in the form of nitrate and also the soil pores will also have this molecular nitrogen it doesn't mean that only atmosphere has this molecular nitrogen when the soil pores will also have this molecular nitrogen and the nitrogen is also in the form of organic matter in the detentate matter this conversion of the nitrogen molecular nitrogen into the ammonia 
is mainly by the biological organisms it is called as biological nitrogen fixation we also have other two different types i told you about this one is industrial process one is physical process which is photo chemical reaction and because of lightning and then the organic matter will be also converted into the ammonia by the process of ammonification and this ammonium which is formed is converted into nitrate the process is called as nitrification and the nit nitrate which is formed it is going to be converted into molecular nitrogen which is which we call it as denitrification and this can directly immobilize these two can directly immobilize or the nitrate can leach out these are the different process which are discussed and within that we have taken this biological nitrogen fixation which is purely with the prokaryotes out of which there are different classes free living and symbiotic within symbiotic there are again nodule forming and non nodule forming and nodule forming again we have legumes and non legumes within that we come across a rhizobium species rhizobium genus with the several other several species which are specific to the host so we have taken this and understood like how the nodules are formed and finally how this inorganic or sorry how this organic form or the unavailable form of nitrogen is converted into the available form so now at the end we had the nitrate or the ammonium and this has to be converted into or this has to be absorbed by the plants and after the absorption this nitrate should be again converted into the ammonium before it is getting incorporated into the amino acids so this is two step process and this is also two step process this is what we have discussed till now i hope all the things are very much clear to you all you all if you have any doubts you can just comment on the comment on this video we will try our best to answer your questions i hope you people are preparing well i just want to repeat that like we have given the complete mock test bundle which are available for the six different subjects if you are interested to take them it is just available for 149 you can find the links in the description box the links for the previous year question papers of all the subjects and also the links for the purchase of the online mock test bundle and also the previous year question papers if all of these links are provided in the description box you can click on the links and purchase the mock test bundle or you can download the previous year question papers if you are needing and also there are whatsapp group links that are mentioned in the description box you can join our whatsapp group groups for the regular discussions which will be going on and we will be clarifying the doubts of all the students and also you can join our telegram group for the to attend the daily free quizzes on the topics of general agriculture which are going on now which will be carried out till the 28th of this june so prepare well and if you have any queries feel free to contact us thank you so much i believe like this video would be useful for all of you who are preparing for icr pg exams so if you like our content please like comment share and subscribe our youtube channel keep supporting